We all have them. Paintings that feel like a failure to the point of no return. It's not just a rite of passage of art making, but an inevitability. But even your most loathed art attempts have value and can live on. Let me show you. Here's what you need to start with, a simplish page of watercolor texture. And my newest book, Mixed Media Adventures, gives you just that. Pages and pages of done-for-you watercolor starts to your next masterpiece hopes. My book officially launches November 22nd, so in the meantime, I've included a download of the page I'm working with today in the info section below. So go ahead, grab it, and print it to your heart's content. So let me give you a little hint. We're basically going to be chopping up our most hated paintings because we didn't like them much to begin with anyway, but they are filled with loads of texture and beautiful watercolor moments that deserve to be saved and carried on in some way. So there's three steps to this process. Number one, you're gonna print out the watercolor texture download I have for you below. It's a simple link, just click it and it's all yours. Number two, you're gonna find the paintings that you're gonna happily cut up. And then you're gonna start cutting shapes out of them. Leaves, petals, tendrils, little ruffly things that could be flower centers, because yes, we're gonna create a flower scene today. And I'd say maybe set a timer for 10 minutes, 15, if you're really enjoying the process, and just cut out a nice variety of options. Because the point here is that we want options. You can see that my leaf shapes are really just a version of teardrops, and that's it. And then my petals are also teardrops, just a little wider and more oddly shaped, but that's the basic idea. I've got some circles too, just play around. And then the third step, we are just gonna play. We're gonna basically create a collage on top of this watercolor printout page and have fun with it. Now, before you just slide on out of here because you're wondering, Christy, well, what am I gonna do with this crazy, like, assemblage, collage thing that's gonna fall apart if the wind blows the wrong way? Well, here's what you can do if you're worried about that. You can glue these pieces down as you work. I don't because I guess I'm just crazy like that, but it's okay. Glue them down and a couple of things you can do after when this is all finished. We're gonna have to stick around to find out what those are. Okay, before we get on to the next part, friends, let me know, is this fun? Is this something you might wanna try and do? Go ahead into comments and let me know if you have some old paintings you're thinking of chopping up. And while you're at it, go ahead and give this crazy video a boop. That's a like. Okay, so basically you're just going to arrange a composition on top of this watercolor page. Consider the watercolor page your background. It's done. You don't have to worry about it. And you might want to like trim and retrim and reshape some of the petals and leaves that you cut out earlier. And the reason I don't like to glue things down, at least in the beginning, is so that I can easily rearrange and things don't get messy. So notice up top, my purple flower that I'm arranging there, that's kind of my focal point flower. And I'm also kind of keying off of some of the sketching that's on the watercolor sheet download, uh, like the leaves, the linear moments. And I'm kind of creating these collage flowers and leaves around those two dimensional elements. A fun tip for this type of project is grab yourself a pair of tweezers. It can be a lot easier to pick up smaller bits of paper that you've cut out with tweezers and also really helps with placement and not kind of disrupting other areas that you've already placed. I've actually done this technique, but also incorporated fresh floral elements. And if you wanna take a look at that, I'm gonna link some videos below. Now, hopefully you're already feeling some possibility here, some resurrection for your old undesirable artwork, right? Here's another little tip I want you to think about. When you're cutting out the petals and the leaves, or honestly, whatever you're gonna end up making your collage of, don't forget that you can add painting on top of those cutout pieces. So for example, one, linear details in the petals, you can paint those on. Two, extra shadows with a bigger brush in the leaves, go for it. Three, layer on more color, glaze over the entire leaf with another color that gives it more depth. Remember, you're not stuck with just what you've cut out. Add to it. Even go for mixed media. Add some white ink or gold shimmer or whatever floats your creative boat. What I hope you'll love about this project as much as I do is the flexibility. Number one, you're taking something that really didn't bring you as much joy as you'd hoped, you know, the artwork that you're not loving, and you're turning 
turning it into something new with a whole bunch more possibilities. Number two, because of the nature of collage, you get to mess around and try different things without having to worry about fixing any marks or lines that you laid down that you didn't like because you can simply just pick up the cutouts and move them around. So as far as I'm concerned, this is one massive joy inducing type of project. If you agree, go ahead, let me know in comments by saying heck yes. Now I'm sure you might want a look at my finished product and guess what? This was the project that I did for the cover of my newest book. You guessed it, Mixed Media Adventures, and here she is. And that leads me to how you can use the finished art, being that it is three dimensional, after you've created it. Number one, you can take a photo, a really nice top down photo in front of a window where you get natural light, but not direct sunlight and take a beautiful shot from directly above. Then you can use that, you can print it out, make prints, make greeting cards, make calendars, just have fun with it. And it's a really affordable way to gift your artwork to your friends and family. Number two, take the original and turn it into a shadow box. And again, this could be a great gift or just something that you keep for yourself. As a reminder that your worst paintings, the ones that frustrate you the most, can still be turned into joy. Now here are a few more things that you can do with all of those painting failure scraps. And I think we've learned that they're not actually failures, so yeah. Go and get it. Until next time, I wish you happy painting.